ESPN presents NCAA basketball from the Omni in Atlanta. Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech against the Lions of Loyola Marymount. Happy holidays from the heart of Dixie, Atlanta, Georgia, where college basketball takes center stage this evening. A great week of hoops here at the Omni in Atlanta. And tonight, the home team, the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech, against the Lions of Loyola Marymount in the second game of the Kuppenheimer Classic this evening. Earlier tonight, Georgia, another home team, knocked off the Texas Longhorns. Good evening, I'm Bob Carpenter, and it all started here three nights ago when they went three overtimes. Georgia Tech and Kenny Anderson in a thriller knocked off Hugh Durham's Bulldogs, and that was quite a ball game. Hugh Durham came back to win earlier tonight. Bobby Kremens tries to do the same here against LMU. Larry Conley, a ball game like this, it'll be up-tempo. It could be an unbelievable night for Kenny Anderson. Bob, it could be. You know, you look at a Loyola Marymount team that arguably played against the best center in the country on Wednesday. Tonight, they may be playing against the best guard in Kenny Anderson. Kenny Anderson handles the basketball as well as anybody in this country. Watch this play from Wednesday night's highlights. Yes, he can do that. He doesn't have to, but when he needs to do it, he can do it any way he wants. You want to look at some stats? Look at this. 40 points and 55 minutes of playing time against Georgia Wednesday. In fact, per game now, he's averaging over regulation 41 minutes per game played. Meanwhile, Loyola Marymount epitomized by the play of Terrell Lowry. He's been over 40 points three times already this year. Well, he may be the answer to Kenny Anderson. He can do it anywhere, inside, outside. A good shooter, a good three-point shooter. And the guy that Loyola Marymount looks to when they get that style going up and down the floor, what they call the system. And the system has had a tough road trip so far, losing to Oklahoma and losing to LSU. They take on Georgia Tech here tonight in... From the WCC, the West Coast Conference, to the ACC, the Atlantic Coast, Loyola Marymount and Georgia Tech battling tonight at the Omni in Atlanta. And here's the Sears diehard starting lineup. First of all, for the visiting team, uh, two and six the start, and also helping out in the three-point area, shooting 38% from that range is junior guard Craig Holt, who's averaging 16 points a game, 15 against Oklahoma Saturday, and 17 the other night against LSU. He can let them go as well. Meanwhile, the first-year head coach is Jay Hillock, an assistant under Paul Westhead. There's the five-year record of Westhead, who took this team to consecutive NCAA tournaments his final three years out in L.A. And meanwhile, the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech off to a four-and-three start. And we'll focus in here on Kenny Anderson's help, if you will. Guard John Berry, the only player on this team in double figures every single ball game. He's averaging 15 per outing. And Bobby Crimmins voted by some the coach of the year on a national basis last year. And he has been the man who has put Georgia Tech into its glory years of basketball here. They've been to the NCAA seven times in their history. Bobby's been at the helm for six of those. The Yellow Jackets, the rambling wreck, whatever you choose to call them, one of the good programs in the nation, picked preseason number four in the ACC behind North Carolina, Duke, and Virginia, numbers one, two, and three. And Larry, your thoughts on this ball game tonight with Loyola Marymount playing uh, certainly a different foe than they did in Oklahoma and LSU. Bob, they look like two different clubs. Uh, they lost ball, both basketball games to, to LSU and Oklahoma, but played much better, I thought, in Baton Rouge the other night. One of the things I'm interested to see early on is how Tech performs after coming off of that triple overtime win against Georgia. Tonight they're playing against a club that really likes to go up and down the floor and here's a special guest. There's the undisputed heavyweight champion Evander Holofield who is with us tonight here. He will be throwing out the ceremonial first tip. Well respected and well loved in this town. You know what Larry I don't think anybody who's come along in his sport in the last couple of decades have represented the kind of integrity this young man has. That's the best toss I've seen all year. <laughs> Evander, put on the stripes. You can play. You can do this game. He can play anywhere he wants. All he has to do is just say so. Now, the thing I was getting back to, I want to finish my uh, thought about this, is I'm interested to see how Georgia Tech's going to perform coming off of that really taxing performance they had against Georgia the other night having to play 55 minutes a workout on Thursday a workout on Friday and tonight having to play against a Loyola Marymount team that lo loves to go up and down the floor 
So uh, let's let's take a look and see if uh, if they really are in good shape. Here's Bobby Kremers. You take a look at some of his stats. They've had great success here. Less than 48 months from a winless ACC to a championship a couple of years later. That's been the story of Bobby Kremens here in Atlanta. Now he's sustaining it with recruits like Kenny Anderson. Although it doesn't appear he'll hold on to Kenny for three or four years. Most expect him to be out of here. At midcourt, it's Matt Geiger for Georgia Tech in their home gold. In their road maroon, it's Loyola Marymount jumping up with Chris Knight. Referee John Moreau throws it up, and Mackey has it. So do the Yellow Jackets with Kenny Anderson running the offense. And we should see the Lions in a zone most of the night, Larry. Yeah, they're in a 2-3 right now. Uh, Georgia Tech, a much taller, more physical club on the inside than Loyola Marymount. Hill swings it right side. Anderson nice faked pass. the shot. Geiger for two, and Kenny Anderson already has an assist. Bob, you know the thing I like about Kenny Anderson is he gives it up, and he doesn't do it very fancily. He just simply gets the ball to the open man, and that's the key to good point guard. You sound like Hugh Durham, who we talked to today. He was marveling at the ease with which Anderson passes. Looking back at that ball game here on Wednesday night. Or detect man to man. A little bit out of control was Chris Knight. Lions managed to keep control. They're in a stall game. They've waited 12 seconds to take a shot. <laughs> now the shot clock goes down to 15. I think this is the longest I've ever seen them wait to take a shot. Look at this. Terrell Lowry open for a free. A little long, and Mackey has it for the Jackets. They outlet to Anderson. Watch it again. He's going to say, I can take it by anybody. He went by Lowry. Look at that. Little dipsy do inside. Got really between two defenders after he got by Terrell Lowry out front. Guy can do everything with the ball. He's, he's a magician. 22 attempts from the line against Georgia the other night. Three point play. And very quickly, it's 5 0 for the home team. I think that 22 attempts was the most ever attempted by a Georgia Tech basketball player in the history of uh, their basketball. Game. Kevin Cantwell, assistant coach, told me today that he really feels Kenny Anderson can get to the free throw line anytime he wants to. Look at that touch from the Czechoslovakian Richard Petruska. Petruska, pleasant surprise for, the, surprise for the Lions. He really handles the ball well outside. Nice turnaround jump from lefty. Anderson has a man reaching in. Looks like number one on Terrell Lowry. Chris Knight was also helping out. It'll be number one on the guard who's averaging 30 per game. Jimmy Anderson coming off of that 55-minute performance against Georgia on Wednesday night. Looks like he's in pretty good shape. He went down the lane pretty well that time, handled it uh, the second time. There's Perry, a little short on the three. Mackey reaching for the rebound. And out to long range, Brian Hill. Bad positioning there by Loyola. They were just basically outmanned 3 nothing on that side of the rim. So Marymount goes back on defense. 2-3, Tech content to work the uh, perimeter. Skip pass all the way across to Anderson. Nice dish inside. Mackey blocked by Petruska. Mackey got it back. Geiger right side. Thought about the fadeaway. And it's short again, this time from John Barry. He's been long and short. Petruska pulls it down, and Terrell Lowry runs for the Lions. Anderson defending, but no way. Well, that's the one thing Lowry does very well. Tech's going to throw it away, and they're going to get it back underneath. No, a save. Look at Barry. Almost saved it. Craig Holt has it. Now it's off to Lowry and Barry from nowhere to steal. Hill loses it. Here comes Chris Knight all the way, and he can't hit the layup. Georgia Tech touched the ball last. It hit the baseline, and the Lions will have it back as John Barry hustling, even though it did not pay off in a score. Great save down on the other end to come back and almost get another steal. Lost it to Marymount. Loyal to Marymount. Got it. Now they've got another chance for a shot here. Craig Holt dishes inside. There's Petruska again. Good left-handed move. And a little travel as he was backing into Matt Geiger. One of the things Petruska's had problems with is adjusting to uh, American rules in basketball. Over here, if they give you a little, that extra little step, over here they don't. Barry says, you better guard me. Well, he was long and short, and that one was perfect. Finding the range. And off the miss, Loyola Marymount will keep it in an 8-4 game. We're almost three minutes in here at the Omni in Atlanta. Terrell Lowry will throw it in for the Lions. Petruska back to him. Nice little give and go on the inbounds play, and they get the reverse. Immediately loyal to Marymount coming right back with that pressure. Geiger's going to handle it up top and threw it away. Lowry. Oh, 
bad pass. Chris Knight threw that one up for grabs. Well, that's what you call, Larry, failing to make the easy pass. He had the chance to take the ball and get it down inside. Instead, threw it to the sideline, almost threw it to Bobby Crimmins' lap. The human bruise is coming in. Goggles ready. Tom Peabody, the 6'3 senior for Loyola Marymount, and Chris Knight checks out. Knight had a real off night against Oklahoma with only eight points, came back with 17 against LSU, and not a whole lot here in the first three minutes. Chris Berman left. Chris off night. Yeah, it was good night in Oklahoma for him. In the worst sense. Greg Holt on the left wing. And the jumper is perfect from Christian Scott. Oh, good pass. Look at Mackey. Here we go. Ooh. Malcolm Mackey averaging 17. Tech needed that one to make it 10-8 and equalizing is Petruska. Larry, that's the extra dimension those international players have, that great touch on the jump shots outside. So does Barry, though, but he misses, and Terrell Lowry comes back for LMU. For three. Knight had a touch, or check it, it was Christian Scott. Out of bounds, and Georgia Tech will have it. Typical exchange there between Georgia Tech and Loyola Marymount. Up and down. Nearly four minutes in, Anderson receives it. 2-2-1 two, two, pressure right now defensively for Loyola Marymount. Lions look like they got a chance. Look at Geiger handle it. Nice pass to Hill. Three on one. Over to Barry. He checked to make sure he was behind the line. Hill has the offensive rebound. He used Mackey as a screen, but couldn't hit the open jumper. Here's Terrell Lowry, right side for Craig Holt. Anderson steals. Here look we those, go. Look at those hands. Not even contesting him were the Lions. Five for Kenny, and it's a two-point lead for Tech. Saved by Mackey. Lowry with a reverse on the steal, and Petruska with the tip to follow. A half dozen. Peabody with a steal. Here's Lowry again, and he is fouled by Geiger as the Lions play a little defense here. You know, Bob, the thing Georgia Tech has to guard against, they're not as proficient in grabbing that ball out of bounds and getting it inbounds quickly enough. And Georgia Tech that time tried to get the ball inbounds. Geiger a little too quick. Bobby Cremens will shuttle a couple of guys in. There's Ivano Newbill, the redshirt freshman out of Macon, Georgia, former Georgia Player of the Year. Petruska off to a good start. Will sit down for Loyola Marymount. And they check in John O'Connell, their junior forward from Pennsylvania. We'll give him a breather. At the line is Terrell Lowry. And also in for Georgia Tech is Brian DeMolica, senior guard who helped them by hitting a crucial three-pointer the other night that got the Georgia game into the second overtime. How about Terrell Lowry, been shooting 85 to 90 percent all year long. This is a free throw. He had 32 consecutive earlier this year. He has five on the night. Timeout on the floor. Four and a half minutes in. It's a 12-12 game. The pace is quick in Atlanta. We welcome to our broadcast table Evander Holofield, the undisputed heavyweight champion. Evander, thanks for being with us. And tell us about some of the things happening that you think need to happen in the sport as far as uh, congressional legislation, things of that sort that you're aiming toward. Well, you know, the rules and regulation need to be uh, ironed out. Have one set of rules that everybody will have to follow by. I want to ask you a question. Did you ever play the game of basketball? You're such a great athlete. Well, I played when I was 10 years old. I was good. When I was 12, I was average. <laughs> then all of a sudden, those hands got bigger, the body got bigger, you decided to go to the ring, huh? Well, yeah, you know, I like a little bit more contact. Evander, I live in Atlanta. I want to tell you, very proud to have you in this city. You're a wonderful human being, and you've been terrific for this city. A great ambassador. Well, thank you. Hey, congratulations, thank you uh, by the way, on the example you're setting for others in your sport and other sports as well. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Off the three-pointer, here's Kenny Anderson for Georgia Tech. Barry back to him. How's that for nifty passing? Newville has it. Can't get the layup in. Offensive board work that time by Georgia Tech down underneath. Kept it alive. Mackey was there. Newbell was there. Just does a nice job rebounding. Georgia Tech by two. Mackey with the turnaround. They kick it around. And Damala got on top to John Berry, who hit that three a few moments ago. Jump hook from Mackey was way too strong. And here come the Lions. Terrell Lowry nice and O'Connell. Nice transition. Well, that's one thing the Loyola Marymount does very well. Run that break and get the ball to the open man. Good angle, good cut. With the good spacing, they made the nice pass. The Malik says, I'll run a little bit too. Now, Georgia Tech, a little short depth-wise around that perimeter. Otherwise, a guy like Brian DeMalik, who's 
played very little the last two years. Might not even be playing for this team. And here he came off the bench to hit that huge shot for them the other night. Well, they expected to have Dennis Scott back here this year, which would give them another perimeter player. Demolic missing. Peabody scraps it somehow, saves it, and outlets at the same time for Terrell Lowry. He goes for three, missing the rim. A foul underneath their pointing at Malcolm Mackey. Gave Chris Scott a big enough bump to almost knock him into the trombone section of the Georgia band over there. Tie game, five minutes and 50 seconds in. Only a couple of team fouls on each squad so far. Interesting day in college basketball today, huh? Duke beating Oklahoma at Oklahoma to destroy that long winning streak that Oklahoma's had out there for so long. Ohio State looked good. Very good. There's O'Connell missing the long range shot. Mackey pulls it down. And a bad pass up the court. Ooh, O'Connell was going for it and got there a little bit too late. Well, one thing's for sure, O'Connell can get those skis going pretty well. I mean, when he gets rolling, he motored over there, got Kenny Anderson, and uh, I'll tell you what, the guy has got some feet on him. John O'Connell, nice play. Bono Newville, the man you saw there. O'Connell goes down court along with Terrell Lowry. Ray Holt. Anderson all over him. Working off the pick is Lowry. Lions doing a nice job with their half-court offensive game. Something we haven't seen them do a lot of. Mackey rejecting Holt. Anderson, two 360s up the floor. He's double teamed, and he dumps it off for Ivano Newville. Good move by Kenny Anderson. Pull it out. Let's take a look and see what we've got here. What you're looking at is a Lions 2-3. Ball out of bounds. It'll stay in possession. With 30 seconds remaining on the shot clock for the Yellow Jackets. A little different change of pace, I think, for Loyola Marymount than what they've been playing the last two games, particularly after the Oklahoma game. We're having a chuckle this morning at the shoot around saying, why are they practicing their half-court offense? This is why. Wallach kicks it out for Barry. He is not shy. Missed that one by plenty. Mackey had a touch. Peabody battled him, and the Lions get it back. Malcolm Mackey had 18 rebounds against Georgia Wednesday night. He's averaging 11 a game. And for the first time, Raheem Harris. He's just back from a dislocation of his right-hand index finger. He has his fingers taped together on that right hand. And Texel in that man-to-man -man defense straight up. Petrushka wants the ball. He's had a pretty good seven minutes. He's got it. He's got Mackey inside. Petrushka missing on the jumper. The defensive work that time by Mackey had a hand in his face. He body body a touch. Up. Third row. Right behind us, and O'Connell gets the interception down the court. And there is palming the ball on Terrell Lowry. A different look for the Lions tonight. Uh, the half-court game and maybe not forcing it as much as they have. A, a little more patience on that initial shot. Maybe that they, you know, maybe it may be that they've decided, Bob, to uh, change the way they want to approach the rest of the season. Jay Hillock watching as Matt Geiger and Brian Hill both checked in for Georgia Tech. There's Hill kicking it on the break to Anderson, and he did a 360 again. Seven points for Kenny. Tech leads by two. Petruska off a Lowry pass. Here's Anderson again. Geiger to his left. He'll do it himself. Right handed. Geiger. And it might have been offensive goaltending up there. Touched the ball while it was on the iron. Kenny may have pushed that one a little bit too much. He had a wide open man on the left right here. He forced Petruska to come to him. All he had to do was drop it off to the left side. He had Geiger wide open. State minutes in now. And again, the half court offense by Loyola Marymount. Good screen down inside by Petrushka. A oh, good block by Geiger. Geiger got Harris. Here comes Hill all the way. And Harris with the block. Geiger gets the offensive rebound. And O'Connell has it for LMU. What a terrific defensive, defensive play by Raheem Harris. Here he comes, right wing. Dumps it for Petrushka. Geiger might have touched that shot on the way up. Ryan Hill kicks it down to the baseline, and Ivano Newbill has his first basket. Nice move by Lowry. Looking for Harris, who touched it last over the baseline. 
And Georgia Tech will have it back with 11.23 to go, first half. The pace is furious. Georgia Tech leads by four. It's still early, 19-15. The Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket, his team up by four right now as we're just over eight and a half minutes in here. At the Omni in Atlanta, Bob Carpenter with Larry Connolly and Buzz knows that each team is shooting 47% so far, though the attempts are slightly different. It's not a stinging endorsement, I don't think. We'll let you get away with that one. Once. Geiger takes the inbounds pass and the well, Jackets are running. The secondary break, and Brian Demolic will go out on top with Anderson right wing. Kenny has it there. Lions pack it in 2-3. Anderson may lead the nation in minutes played this year. He keeps going at this rate. Have to take him out of the lineup. He plays so well. Keeps the club rolling. Good leadership. They don't have a lot of depth, as we mentioned earlier, so sometimes he has to play that much. Basically seven, maybe eight guys. Short with the left-hander. And the rebound ripped out of there by Chris Knight. Here's Terrell Lowry. Raheem Harris, nice entry pass for Petruska. O'Connell crashing the offensive board. No foul called. He has it again and gets it in. John O'Connell with a couple of baskets off the bench. Immediately loyal to Mary Matthew. That one, two, two. Don Malik, nice pass. Newbill blew the layup, but it was because he was fouled. Terrell Lowry might have undercut him just a bit. A very pleasant surprise for Bobby Kremlis to have Brian Demolic playing as well as he has. Wednesday night against Georgia with that big three to force it into an overtime. That time he beat the press. He was kind of one on four midcourt, got through it, made a nice pass, and New Bill walked to the line and shoot two. There's a guy that in 29 games over two years averaged 0.8 points a game and 0.2 rebounds. And suddenly he's playing in very important sequences for this club. Kind of interesting that he and Mundlin are the only two seniors on this club. Talk around Atlanta really is that Kenny Anderson will be leaving after this year uh, to go to the NBA. And sort of unfortunate. You love to see a guy stick around and play. How about they'd have had Scott come back this year? What kind of club do you think they would have had with both of those guys? O'Connell after the two misses by Newbill, who's only five of ten from the line as a freshman. <laughs> On the high post, it's Chris Knight. They work off that with Lowry. He saw Geiger in his face and got it to O'Connell. Johnny short with it. That's a push. Looks like it might have been Chris Knight on the back. Or was he the man pushed? That'll belong to Georgia Tech. He was the push over in his first foul. And he's still scoreless. Two seconds away from the halfway point in this first half. Here's Perry. Up over the top of Petruska, and then Hill coming in for the offensive rebound. And a foul on him as he was on Terrell Lowry's back. Lowry got the good inside position that time, and Hill could do nothing but climb his shoulders. Now the Omni a bit quiet right now. Not a whole lot happening from the scoring standpoint. The score is relatively low for a Marymount game, 19 to 17. We're 10 minutes and 10 seconds into the first half. It really is unusual. Oh, offensive foul. Like John O'Connell moving a bit on the screen. That'll be his second. Bob, you know, you and I had a great game Wednesday night with Missouri and Illinois, but they say that the Georgia Tech-Georgia game here Wednesday night was one of the best college games they've ever had in the Omni. Last team standing one. There was a real endurance contest with Kenny Anderson, a real star in that game, and he's just back in this one. Anderson. On a pass from Brian Hill, that's a two, and Kenny has nine. Good job by Tech getting back on defense. The one thing playing against Loyola very much, you've got to be able to do. You've got to be able to get back Petrushka again. Swats it in, eight points for him. Mackey looking to pass, Petrushka nearly with a steal. John Berry saves it, but right to Terrell Lowry. Nice spin move at midcourt by Lowry around Anderson. Got away from him. Rim the shot out. Geiger down the court. John Berry should be an easy two. When you commit that many people to offensive rebounding, it really opens up the back door, and there was no one back to defend against the jam. Tech by four. Petruska baseline right. Crashing in was Chris Knight looking for the offensive board. Anderson ahead. Geiger can't reach it. Turnover number nine already for Georgia Tech. 
If Kenny Anderson stays for four years here and does what he's done so far, the numbers will be unbelievable. He'll lead in everything except games played. Probably would lead in minutes played. <laughs> yeah, he might average over 40 minutes a game for four years. Trishka, good left-handed move. A little too strong with the shot. Geiger sees Barry right wing. Hold back to Goss. Oh, good on pass. Him. Anderson scores and he's fouled. Good pass. John Barry, that's the way you run it, pal. You get to the ball to the open man. Kenny Anderson was the guy. Beautiful play. It's the way you run the break. You got only two guys left. You run it the way you're supposed to do it. Get the good angle, get the good cut, and make the bounce pass. That's what John Barry did. Anderson with his second three-point play of the night. 12 for him, and Tech has its biggest lead of seven. Knocked away, Hill, Barry hooks it down to it. Nice pass. And he blew the lane. The man I used to play for used to say, you'll never see that one again. Oh, what a shot by Lowry. That was beyond the NBA line. The Hawks, that was beyond the red stripe. Mike Fratello sitting down the way. Like that one. Eight points for Terrell Lowry. Anderson double and triple teamed. And the Lions come three on one. Oh, nice pass by Lowry. But who's it to? Holtz. He misses the shot. Geiger a touch, and he lost it. Underneath, Lowry improvises, and he has double figures. That's how quickly LMU can bring it back. Lions making a run here. A five point one for them, and a foul in the backcourt on Terrell Lowry. And that might be his third. We'll have a timeout on the floor with 7.40 to go in the first half of play. Looks like the foul will be on Chris Knight, his second. So into the bonus situation. Jay Hillock's team with its seventh team foul. Lowry looks a little ill over there. He got a momentarily sick feeling when he thought he'd drawn his third foul. Out of there for now with 10 points. Well, the Loyola Marymount team is the college version of the NBA travel. I mean, uh, most, most teams go home and play at least one or two games. Not this, these guys. They want to stay on the road for a month. Did you see that free throw? Brian Hill pumped. About four guys went into the lane. You do the pump fakes underneath, not at the free throw line. John Moreau, the official, down underneath, warning these guys. And then a look. He's going to pump fake. I've never, never seen a referee coach before. One. Just one pump that time. Can't argue with the result. Nice rotation. We get our television timeout now with 7.40 to go. First half of play. Georgia Tech over Loyola Marymount by four. Georgia Tech band doing their thing here at the Omni in Atlanta. Their team up by four with 7.40 to go. First half. And considering the AFC playoff picture in the NFL, the Bills, Dolphins, and Raiders already in. Now three of those bottom six will get in. And Seattle down at 7-7, seven and seven, playing a crucial game tomorrow night on ESPN. They take on the Broncos at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Mike Patrick and Joe Beisman to call it for you as Seattle tries to get in in that expanded playoff format this year. Here in Atlanta, Bob Carpenter with Larry Conley wishing you happy holidays, and we're celebrating it with college hoops. Another miss from the left side, and again, Chris Knight having trouble getting untracked on the road this evening. Nice job of Mackey underneath to pull that one down. Ryan Hill kicked it down to the baseline, and hanging in the air, John Barry gets into double figures. And then down the court, he hustles back and almost gets a steal. Bob, it's the one thing Bobby Crimmins worked on in practice on Friday. He said that we've got to make sure we've got to shut off either the first pass or the secondary pass on that break. That time, John Barry got there to slap it away. Crimmins with that typical white hair, green ever more every year. And the yellow tie. Greg Walker is in for Loyola Marymount. He's the guy handling the ball. He saw Barry coming on the trap and said, I'm getting out of here. Chris Knight needs a basket here. Still can't hit. Mackey the rebound for Tech. And it's just thrown away by Brian Hill. Walker for Holtz. The long three is short. Anderson, triple team. Picked up his dribble. He's got nowhere to go. Got a foul. Luckily for him, he was running out of time. Greg Walker on the reach. 
he got banged around pretty good down there. Whenever you pick that dribble up in that situation, you better get your teammates to come back and help. Now watch this. See, he's dribbling, picks it up. Now once he's got it there, now they know they've got it. All you got to do is cover up if the foul was committed down underneath Loyola Marymount's basket. The human bruise is back in, Tom Peabody. He's been to Rice, Orange Coast College, at Juco rank, and then to Loyola Marymount for his last two years. Kenny Anderson now with 13 on the night. He averages 24, five rebounds, and seven assists per game. I think the most impressive statistics the fact that He's actually appeared on seven national or regional publications this year. Now, that, now that's a stat. The covers. Preseason first team All-American he was chosen. LMU in a real dry spell here. Holt for three. Nice green. Mackey has it. Well, Mackey's doing great work off of that backboard. O'Connell with a bad reach into the backboard. That's his third foul. But sometimes it's tough to get those size seven teams moving. John Moreau, the official, walked up next to him today, and put his foot up next to his, and it kind of swallowed his shoe. That's a lot of L.A. gear right there. Malcolm Mackey with his third of the night. It's been another pleasant surprise for Georgia Tech. Malcolm Mackey coming on very strong at 18 rebounds against Georgia the other night. Talking to Bobby Clemens, he feels like Mackey might be his most improved player. Geiger with a nice offensive rebound. Anderson faked the three, dumps it down. Mackey was on his way up, and it was stripped by O'Connell. Here comes Lowry. Nice move. Oh, he lost it, but he was fouled. Got it right in front. He said, I've got a three. Watch it again, down and said, now watch this move right here. He gets Anderson going on his heels. And once he's got him going that way, got him right on the elbow just as he started up. Got a new man, like this guy, Terrell Lowry can play. Averaging 30 points a game, averaging nine assists a game. So I got to tell you, he's just out there shooting or bombing away. The guy can dish it when he has to. Ivan Newbill back in for Georgia Tech. Malcolm Mackey has a breather. Yeah, they turn the ball over a lot, don't they? The turnover ratio to assists. But he also scores a lot, 11 points tonight. He has now scored 92 points on this three-game road trip. Anderson, nice look, right side to Newville, but you've got to be able to catch that quick pass. You've got to think along with Kenny Anderson, Larry, when you're on the break with him, don't you? Bob, that's the thing that I think is most difficult for guys who come in and play with a player who can dish the ball like they've got great peripheral vision. He'll find you, and you better get your hands up and ready to catch it. Averaging almost a turnover a minute. Small lineup out there for Loyola Marymount with Lowry, Peabody, and Holt scrambling around. There's Peabody in the paint, threw one up there and drew the foul. He's not pretty, but he gets the job done and gives his ball club a spark when he comes in. Pretty tough move right there by Peabody to try to get that shot off. I think he was fortunate to get fouled because he didn't have anywhere to go and probably would have gotten a charging foul had he not gotten that shot off and been fouled from the rear. Second foul on Matt Geiger. Tell you what, I've seen this guy fly across scores, tables, go through the backboard braces. I've seen him on every part of the floor. Well, they say he averages about seven floor burns a game. Oh, 7.2, I've just been corrected. Thank you, Jay Love. Craig Holt will leave. And Raheem Harris is back in for LMU. Holt with an off night. He's averaging 16, has not scored yet. with his first point. All the way down, Brian Hill, offensive foul. Oh, nice job in defensive work that time inside by Christian Scott. He got both of those feet planted, drew it, and Hill went right over the top of him. Watch underneath. Hill trying to get there. Oh, that's great work. That is great work to get in position that quickly. Nice job by Christian Scott. Okay, guys, let's go. 
Ryan what, Demolic is back for Georgia Tech. Excuse me, Blake, what I was going to say, I, I don't think I've ever run into a college team as laid back as Loyola Marymount. I mean, these guys, you talk about relaxed, and I mean, they enjoy this game. They love to play the game. And we asked him the other day, you know, what do you call your system? It's called the system. The system. Here's John Berry running for Tech. He gets in the middle, nobody on the wings, and with three men on him, he can't hit the jumper. Lowry is back for LMU. Oh, just squirts good. his way through, got it back. And Berry with the steal. He is really instinctive on grabbing those loose balls. All the way for the score. And they come back. John O'Connell to get his own rebound out of bounds. Tech has it with their biggest lead of 35-26. All right, here's John Berry on the good defensive work. He gets the ball back, takes it in, lay it up on one side. No, thank you. I'll use my left hand and spin it off the glass. Nice work, John. And nice work, Kenny Anderson, with a quick jumper as we come back live. Raheem Harris way short, but Demolic fouled it. The one thing if you're going to play against Loyola Marymount, you've got to make sure that you've got that conversion in your mind from offense to defense. You can't relax, you can't celebrate, because they're going to get it out and blow up the floor. Nice hand on the floor for James Mundlin, who's coming in. A 6'11 senior from Aiken, South Carolina. Seldom used, but in the third overtime against Georgia on Wednesday, five points, five rebounds. He was an important factor in that big win. From that big man standpoint, Richard Petruska is back in for Loyola Marymount. At the line, Raheem Harris. Nice turnout at the Omni here tonight. They sold somewhere around 15, 15, 5 in tickets. Home of the Hawks and twice this week, Georgia and Georgia Tech. It's interesting to play a game in a facility and the team that you played was back playing the game before you tonight. And won. 79-71, Hugh Durham's team. Took care of Tom Fender's Longhorns of Texas. You know, the month of December is winding down, Bob, and a lot of these clubs are going to forsake all of these great independent matchups or cross-country matchups to get back into conference play. And that's where it really gets down to the nitty-gritty. Tech getting ready to go back to the ACC and, of course, Lord and Raymond going to the WCC. Kenny Anderson with 18. Nobody knows you better than the teams you play against year in and year out. It's always kind of fun in November and December because you get these matchups with clubs that really don't play each other very much. And all of a sudden, January, February hits, and they really get after each other. Let's take a look at this now. Here's the defense by Georgia Tech. Man-to-man -man defense. Look at the, the battle on the inside right there. Mundlin was trying to get Petruska away. Looked like the pass was going to go in there. Lowry was trying to look for him in there. Mundlin was pushing. He's going to get the foul. Tech's in a man-to-man -man defense. And so, so far, Loyola Marymount's half-court game has not been too bad. But they haven't turned the ball over nearly as much as they did against LSU and Oklahoma. Well, they're only turning it over about half as much as Georgia Tech is so far. The foul situation is this, each team with nine. We've still got 408 left in the first half. Petruska got the roll, nine points for him tonight. He's four of nine from the field for his nine to go with the free throw. 6'10", 220, he's a sophomore who played for the Czechoslovakian national team three years. Toured a couple of years ago, played at Loyola Marymount, scored 36 that night. Said, hey, I want to play in this place a time or two. Loyola, Mar Loyola Marymount now has changed their defense. They've gone away from the zone. Kenny Anderson takes advantage. 20 points. Perry with a steal. John Perry can't hit it, but he got it back. Gets people off the floor. 14 for him. Boy, that is a great heads-up play. He knew when the basket was going through, he was going to get his shot. We got a charger block. Block. Looks like Mundlin with his second. You know, what a find this guy has been. A freshman at the University of the Pacific, then junior college ball at Paris, Texas, and now two years left here. What a road to travel, but what a player he's turning out to be. It was a, it was a really a late find for Georgia Tech. They looked around, they needed somebody to fill that shooting guard position when Dennis Scott left. They came up with this guy, and he's done well. He's played very well. I think the thing I'm most impressed about with him tonight is the way he plays his defense. The fact that when the ball goes through, he's got presence of mind enough to remember that these guys are going to get it inbounds. I'm going to find the guy they're going to throw it to, and John Barry's done well on that end. Terrell Lowry with 12 points in the night, four free throws. He's also 
four of eight from the field. And a timeout on the floor with 3.40 to go. Georgia Tech by 13. It's or rather by 12. It's 43-31. Make sure to keep it right here at halftime. Scores and highlights from today and tonight, including UCLA, Iowa. The Bruins brought a perfect record into Carver Hawkeye Arena, and they got into a war. Let's go back now to Bob and Larry for the final for a few minutes of the first half. All right, Chris, thanks a lot. 3.40 to go here. Loyola Marymount is down by a dozen. They've gone cold from the field on 11 of 36, only 31% they're shooting after a pretty good start. Andy Anderson for Tech. A little high on the layup off the glass, and Peabody for LMU clears it. Here's Terrell Lowry. Look at Petrushka, yes! Strong inside. 12 points for him. He had 18 points and eight rebounds against Shaquille O'Neal on Thursday night. Demolic kicks it for Barry. Barry shooting short tonight. He's had about four shots come off the front of the rim. He's a little more up in that shot. Lowry down to Raheem Harris, and he gets his first field goal tonight. Three points for him. Some of you hanging around. Staying close to Tech. They've been down by 12. They're down by just eight now. Demolic for Anderson. That's a three-point attempt, and he buries it. 23 for Kenny Anderson. Oh, and O'Connell from long range. The answer. Seven for him tonight. Demolic breaks the pressure. Barry tries it again, and we're trying to trade threes here. And there's a strong rebound by Newbill and a foul. Again, Barry with a short shot. Tear him off the back. Newbill right there to gather it in and stick it back in. Number two on Richard Petruska. Ivano Newbill at the line. Five for him tonight. And it's back to an 11 point game with 2.15 to go. Right now. Nice screen, good cut, Lowry. Swish. Well, that was a great screen. They got Anderson hung up right at the elbow, and uh, Lowry took it right over the top. He has 15 tonight. Just probing, looking, trying to find an opening in that defense. Couldn't find anything. Brought it back out. Loyola well, continues to change defenses. They're back in the zone. You know what's funny? You look at them working around the perimeter. Every player that receives the ball looks up to see where Kenny is before they do anything else. He kisses it off the glass. Newville. He's got to work on those hands a little bit. Dropped an easy rebound there. And Raheem Harris, way up in the air. Last touched by a yellow jacket. Loyola Marymount will keep it. We're heading further into the weekend here on ESPN, and the NFL is coming your way tomorrow. NFL game day, Chris Berman and the guys preview the entire day at noon Eastern. NFL prime time with all the highlights at 7 o'clock. And then, of course, as we told you earlier, Seattle and Denver will battle at 8 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow night. O'Connell, the turnaround. John O'Connell with nine tonight. Nice work off the bench, O'Connell. Get those seven teams in motion. Demolic throws one up short. Newbill the follow slam, and he missed it. And here's Terrell Lowry. Oh, he lost it. He's got it too far out in front. And the Anderson running for Tech. Nice by Barry. What a pass. Oh, yeah. Newbill caught that one. He had to. It was thrown so hard, it couldn't go anywhere once it stuck on his hands. Tech 51-42. Newbill at the other end, knocking it out of bounds. Pretty pass by John Berry. Love to see the game played that way. Chris Knight back in for Loyola Marymount. Peabody sits down, so does Raheem Harris. And Craig Holt, scoreless, is back in Thank for you, LMU. Terrell Lowry will throw it in. Oh, nice catch. Can he turn it into three? He's still scoreless. O'Connell had it taken away on a foul by Kenny Anderson. A hustle foul. Not a popular call here in Atlanta. 
but the proper one. Kenny Anderson with his second personal. Now each team is over 10 for the half. There's that Ohio State win over Georgetown today with Alonzo Mourning sideline. You know, John really needs to have him back in the lineup. He, he had such a great dimension. He's such a great player. Big is going to be tough this year, Bob. It's always it, is. it is a great conference. It always has been and will, get, will be again this year. A couple surprises out there in college basketball this year for me. I, you know, Nebraska is getting off to such a great start this year. What, a club you never hear much about in the basketball circles, but they're doing well. George Felton's team over at South Carolina off to a great start. Kenny Anderson, a breather. That was Rod Belanis you saw come on, a walk-on who's seeing a little action here. With less than 45 seconds to go, first half. Well, seven-point game, and there's the turnover, and Loyola Marymount could get right back in this one very quickly. 37.9 seconds to go. Georgia Tech leading Loyola Marymount, 51-44. Chris Fowler standing by in the college basketball studio with all of our halftime activities. Busy day in hoops with some big ball games played earlier today. Nice pass by Lowry. Good dish on the penetration. He couldn't get hold to make it. Craig Holt is still scoreless. Damali running over midcourt. Under 20 seconds to go. And Loyola Marymount touched it last. Tech will keep it with 17.8 seconds remaining. Malik went up that sideline and all of a sudden found himself surrounded by a pride of Lions. Rod Belenis will throw it in. Play number one. And he's getting to Kenny Anderson, who's not in there. <laughs> so Barry, Barry, the other Barry gets to the other one. Demolic spins one wide. Oh, what a bill. Oh, what a great catch and jam. Oh, a beauty. Five seconds to go. Lowry, plenty of time. Can't hit the three. Chris Knight has it. Throws it up, and it's wide and short. And it'll be a nine-point game at the half. Ivano Newbill, after a struggle, comes up with seven late points for Georgia Tech. And Jay Hillock's LMU team trails 53-44. Chris Fowler in the studio after this timeout. ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball, Loyola Marymount versus Georgia Tech, is brought to you by Nike, who reminds you to just do it. So Georgia Tech able to force the Lions into more of a half-court game than they'd like to play. They have the nine-point lead at intermission. Let's go to the scoreboard now. UCLA traveling to Iowa. The Bruins were unbeaten. Iowa once beaten. And I'll tell you, they take it into the Corn Belt, and they get belted. The Bruins hung tough for a while. Hawkeyes uh, wearing the Santa hat, but not in a giving mood tonight. Mitchell Butler, though, the jam off the fast break. Bruins led in the first half, but then the Hawkeyes take control. A.C. Earl was tough in the paint. Pump fake goes up, gets the shot. No call. He got pounded right there. Iowa led by eight at intermission. Collision here. Joel Skinner and Derek Martin with the headbutt. Both players okay. They stayed in the ballgame. A.C. Earl to Rodell Davis. Not once, but twice in the little alley-oop right there as they bring the guard inside. Jim Herrick's team not playing great defense. And Iowa wins it 88-71. to The Bruins lose for the first time. They had a six-point lead at one point in the second half, but they blow it. A.C. Earl had 30. Don McLean had 18 for UCLA. Duke and Oklahoma, not since 87 have the Sooners lost at home. Not since 85 have they lost at home to a non-conference team. But the Blue Devils went in and got it done. Bobby Hurley, a catalyst in the second half. Sooners early, though. Terry Evans to Kermit Holmes with the easy lay-in. Then Jeff Webster gets it going. Webster, 32 points. Sooners by five at halftime. But Duke, the turnovers, and then Hurley with the flying layup right there in the foul. Now Leitner with the steal, gets it ahead to Hurley, and Duke's defense key to run in the second half. Hurley to Leitner for the jam. Billy Tubbs, some anxious moments in the second half. His team not careful with the ball. They didn't shoot well from outside, and Thomas Hill punctuates it with the dunk. And Oklahoma loses at home for the first time in three years. Duke winning it by five. Hill and Leitner each had 18 points. Sooners just didn't shoot well enough, 42%. Carolina and Purdue, the first of the two games tonight on ESPN. The Tar Heels going into Purdue, and Gene Cady's team was riding a seven-game winning streak, but they hadn't played a team nearly as good as Carolina. George Lynch, the great athlete for Carolina, making the steal, gets it ahead to Hubert Davis for the land. Then Clifford Rozier. One of the five fab freshmen for Carolina. The big rejection on Craig Riley. 
and then Rick Fox would take over down the stretch for Carolina. Fox, the big guy, has the range. That's why it's going to serve him well in the NBA. One three-pointer. How about another one? He played his high school ball, Indiana, so a nice home cutting for Fox. And Carolina wins it going away. 86-74 to is the final. Fox finishing up with 22 points, also had five rebounds. He was 5 of 5 from the free throw line. Woody Austin, 21 points and 8 rebounds. He won't be there the second semester, but he had a big game for Purdue this evening. Stay with us. More scores and highlights coming back, including Texas, Georgia, Ohio State, and Georgetown. It's the Lions down by 9 of the Jackets. ESPN's presentation of NCAA Basketball, Loyola Marymount versus Georgia Tech. Brought to you by Kuppenheimer Men's Clothiers, America's number one valued clothier for men. The Omni in Atlanta, Georgia. Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, the home team here tonight, and they lead by nine at the half over Loyola Marymount, 53-44. Bob Carpenter back courtside with Larry Conley. Larry. The pace of this game, not everything that we expected from start to finish, but that's not the case with Kenny Anderson. Well, it really is. And when you look at the great guards in this country, Kenny Anderson is going to be right at the top of the list. I want to watch, I want you to watch right here how he steals this basketball, evades the defense. Now, watch him dribble around to the outside, head up, always the head up, looking up. Who's ahead of me? Who does he spot? A teammate. John Berry, right side. Berry says, I got somebody underneath. Ivano Newbill. What a great pass that was. And he does nothing but jam it. Great work by the Georgia Tech offense on the turnover. Watch Anderson with the basketball. Yeah, we're close to December 25th. Three French hens, two turtle doves, and a Kenny Anderson spin. That's what Georgia Tech fans like to have. They've seen a few spins from him in the first half. 23 points. He's also set up a couple of baskets. And meanwhile, Terrell Lowry of Loyola Marymount, good half for him as well. He has accounted for 25 points, scoring 15 of those. As far as the teams go, the shooting for Loyola Marymount, not very good. They're only 16 of 49. Tech is 21 of 48, so the attempts, very close. Turnovers, though, have kept Loyola Marymount in the game. So far, the bench scoring for Loyola Marymount, Marymount has been terrific. And of course, the guy that really has contributed more than anyone for the Lions off of that bench has been John O'Connell, who had 11 in that first half. How about the average time before the first shot? You would think that would be reversed and somewhat even quicker than what Georgia Tech has. But 8.8 .8 seconds for the Yellow Jackets. The Lions had a flat 10 seconds. It's a little unusual for the type of game they have. Well, everybody here in Atlanta getting prepared for Christmas in three days. And I want to personally say Merry Christmas to everybody out there. I think it's a, it's a nice evening. A little tough weather in other parts of the country, though, huh? A little foggy here, but very mild temperature-wise. Entry pass. Petruska turns around and can't start the second half of the basket. Neither can Christian Knight. And the Yellow Jackets come away. Anderson from Barry to the glass. Petruska with the block and the foul. That'll be his third. And again, when you're running that break, make sure you've got your head up, the ball in your hand, and finding somebody who's wearing a friendly gold jersey. Petrushka trailing the play. Barry with a layup, the foul. Ooh, I don't know. I think he got an awful lot of the basketball on that one. Agreed. The check was checked. And his third coming very early second half. John Barry, the best free throw shooter on this club, hits one of two, normally an 83% shooter. 15 for him tonight. And a 10-point lead. Chris Knight can't get it down. Loose ball. Barry comes up, leads a three-on-one. Hold back, Anderson, right side. The pull-up jumper, but Mackey is there for the follow -up. One of the reasons Tech has this big lead right now is that they've done such a great job on the offensive rebounding end. Of Only five points for Malcolm Mackey tonight. There's Christian Scott, can't bury the three. And uncontested two for Terrell Lowry, 17 for him now. Well, there's a 70-foot pass. Barry's wide open and sticks it. A three, 18 for him. Nice pass by Matt Geiger. Georgia Tech worked on that uh, in practice yet. Largest lead, 13 for Georgia Tech. Kenny Anderson running down the left side. Ooh, look at the ball between the legs. Fouled by Lowry on the arm. And that would be his third. Bob, one of the things I've noticed about Kenny Anderson in the year and a half I've watched him play college basketball is that he doesn't do anything fancy.
antsy until it's required of him. He makes sure the basketball gets there. In that situation, he put that ball between his legs, not because he was trying to show off the defender, but simply because he needed to do that to get his position to make the pass. Rebounds play. Mackey misses the jumper. Lowry running to his right. He's got Raheem Harris. And the foul drawn underneath. Hill had Harris's face in his hand. Ryan Hill will get his third. This game may take a while if the fouls keep piling up like they have in the first minute 31 of the second half. Two for 23. Very untypical type of game we expected to see from uh, Loyola Marymount. We expected uh, the same type of game with Jay Hillock. And you see, you see him squatting on the sideline right there. And his troopers were going up and down the last two off games in Norman, Oklahoma, and Baton Rouge, Louisiana. But certainly they've changed that style tonight. Raheem Harris, the East Bay Player of the Year last year at Skyline High School, Oakland, California. He's one of their two marquee freshmen. The other is Kareem Washington out of Lansing, Michigan, and he is still out with a groin injury. Harris is just back from a finger dislocation. Here's Anderson. A nice inbounds pass by Matt Geiger. The Lions got back on defense that time. Georgia Tech could take advantage of nothing. Hill lost the basketball. Got it back. Very entry pass. Mackey turns it into two. Seven for Malcolm Mackey. Well, Georgia Tech did a nice job of shutting off that initial pass. Once they catch it coming through the net and getting out of bounds. Really slowed the break down for Loyola Marymount. Boy, that's a basket they could have used. Chris Knight, still scoreless on the evening, did draw the foul. But you look at Knight and Craig Holt, a combined 28 points a game between them and a big zero for both of them tonight. John Perry's first foul there. Chris Knight out of Los Angeles High School originally. for that young man. That tough one last weekend. Eight points, but eight rebounds against Oklahoma. Improved a bit. He has four rebounds tonight and only one point. Did better against LSU with 17, but only three boards. So he's had an inconsistent week. Lowry on the steal, and 19 for him. And another one. Here he comes. Petruska slashes in. Here come the Lions. Barry breaking it at midcourt. Hill to his right. He pulls up and buries the short jumper. Oh, what a tough shot. John Barry with 20 tonight. Terrell Lowry back the other way, and Barry back on defense. As usual, knocks it out of bounds. Guys all over the floor. He makes the shot. He gets back. He slaps the ball out of bounds. He's everywhere. 11 point spread when the smoke clears here. Georgia Tech 63 52. Oh, my. Barry up in the air over Petruska. That will be his second quick one. Tough situation to get involved in. Geiger tried to make a switch that time uh, on Lowry because Anderson got hung up on a switch. And it left Petruska wide open, so Barry had to cover for him. You know, oftentimes, Bob, when you see a guy commit a foul down underneath, it may not be his man that he's committing the foul against. He may be going to help somebody else. Oh, look at this wide open. Nice screen and cut by Petruska. Everybody went with Chris Knight and left the big guy alone. Now it's back to nine. 63-54. Anderson for Geiger. Trap at midcourt. Here's it off for Brian Hill. Kenny Anderson now. Geiger wanted the ball thrown up in the air. He wanted to play alley-oop. Kenny says, no, I'm not throwing it up there for you. Well, Christian Scott was up on the high post defending in the zone. There was nobody down low. Geiger goes and draws the foul. Looks like Chris Knight might have gotten his third. Well, I sit here and look at Matt Geiger. He is seven feet tall, and I swear he looks like a shoe size of a natural human being. I mean, there are a lot of people around who are seven feet, but this guy looks like he wears about a size 10 shoe. That's not a big base, a big foundation for a guy that big. Not known as a guy who runs the court very well. Two years at Auburn before sitting out last year after the transfer. There he averaged 11 points and five rebounds in 58 ball games over two seasons. Four points tonight for Geiger, who averages 14, and it's 65-54 with 16.45 to go. 
Petruska travel. Trying to dribble and walk around Geiger. Again, I go back to my first half comment how difficult it is for European players to be able to get adjusted to that rule. Knight with the steal. Lowry can't hit the basket in close. And then Knight reaching around trying to grab it. And that's number four on him. Chris Knight with a very frustrating night. Bobby Kremen's head bowed, but he's club right now up by 11. The call goes for Tom Peabody. Knight, four rebounds, one point, four fouls. Mackey from Barry and then back, and Lowry cuts in front, and that will be his fourth. Lions may have to reach down and get a few Cubs off of that bench to help a little bit tonight. This is not a very, uh, no, no, there are no fouls that are very good, but when Lowry with three, who is their leading scorer, commits his fourth, presents problems for Jay Hill. Anderson, double team in the backcourt. Barry has it now, whips it right side. Geiger pulls up. Got the roll, six for him. One thing a young man can do, he does shoot the ball awfully well, from about eight to 10 feet, got a nice touch. Lowry for Raheem Harris. Geiger clears it, looking down court, straight ahead for Barry. Harris behind him. It won't go, but Mackey can't get it either, and finally got it down. Bodies fly in midcourt as Barry was trying to catch up with Terrell Lowry, and John Barry has come up with three very quick fouls here. John Barry's assumed the role that Tom Peabody had last year, flying all over the court. We're four minutes and three seconds into the second half. Georgia Tech led by nine at the half, and now they only lead by five. Georgia Tech up by 15 with 15 to 57 left to go in the second half. Jay Hillock wondering where he's going to get caught up. LMU's extended road trip. Santa Clara with a loss, 100 to 93. You see the other scores, Northeastern, Chaminade. That was all out of the Maui Classic, and they continued their losing ways at UCLA, Oklahoma, LSU. And Georgia Tech and return home to the state of California to at least play within state against Pacific. You know, Larry, I don't want everybody to think I'm some kind of idiot that can't keep score. But they've got a scoreboard here that every time I look up, they got advertisements spinning in front of the score, and I swore it was 69-64. But it's a 15-point spread, folks. Trust me, and thank you very much for your indulgence. I'm not sure they're going to trust you now. Well, the world revolves with advertising, and that's what's costing me the scoreboard right there, you see those signs spinning? We're sitting right below that, and when those signs at the bottom spin around, they block the score. So there's my alibi for the night. Kenny Anderson just committed his third foul. Petruska underneath got a second chance, and he has 18 tonight. Played very well, probably better than anybody out there except for Lowry. Loose ball. Petruska comes up with it for Loyola Marymount. Terrell Lowry kicks it right side. Raheem Harris, a half dozen for the freshman tonight. Geiger looking to get it in. 11-point game with 15-15 to go. Anderson, left-hander, three-pointer, and that's 26 on his first second-half basket. Lowry trying to answer. Harris has it. And there's the freshman exhibiting his young skills again. Harris got a nice stroke. That's two nice jumpers from about 12 feet out. One on the angle, one at the top of the circle. Barry. And Anderson with the offensive rebound. That does everything. He rebounds, he passes, he plays good defense. Peabody feeds it for Christian Scott. <laughs> Georgia Tech rebound. John Berry weaseling out of the traffic. Straight ahead, Mackey, and a foul. Bob, I'm looking at this LMU team right now, and they look like they have been on an extended road trip. They're all grabbing their pants. They're bent over at the free throw line. Down the lane, you can see all three of the guys right there. They're tired. This is a tired basketball team. Malcolm Mackey, Tom Beebody late getting there. Got him across the year. Mackey will go to the line with a three-point chance. It's a tired club. They've been gone away from home for a long time. They've still got 14-33 left to play in this second half against the Georgia Tech team that doesn't seem to be showing any weariness whatsoever after that extended play on Wednesday night against Georgia. Now Mackey following up that effort against Georgia with nine boards this evening. And 12 points after that three-point play. 
Jones hooked down low. Good screen to free Peabody underneath. And terrific pass down in there by Harrison. So Peabody with three on the day. Look at that pass. K.A. Can he answer? Mackey clears it again. He's into double figures off the boards. Behind the back. And this one is out of bounds. Loyola Marymount will have it back. Pretty good defense avoiding the foul there by Raheem Harris. Here's the play prior to that turnover right there. Kenny Anderson with a real quick pass inside. Mackey right there to lay it in. Like I said, he, he doesn't do anything fancy unless he has to. That time he did something fancy and turned the ball over. Look at the defense again by the Lions, though, right at midcourt. Kenny Anderson is best in the game where he's in the open court. 17th turnover for the Yellow Jackets. Loose ball to the baseline. Lowry comes up with the steal. Into the paint. Mackey rejects, but it's goaltending. move right down the middle. One of the things I like about Lowry is he shoots well from the outside, but if you come out and really try to play him toe-to-toe, -to -toe, he'll blow by you. He'll take the ball down inside. Slight of frame. Only 170 on that 6'2 height. And there's the slight 5'11 sophomore, Greg Walker. Giving them a little depth hey, at the run. guard position. A freshman walk-on last year, seeing spot duty here this evening to give folks some breathers. Raheem Harris and O'Connell trying to trap in the backcourt. Brian Hill breaks the pressure. Nice reversal to Anderson, and that's a three. Kenny Anderson with 31 now. His career high was 40 against Georgia. They surpassed that tonight. Yeah, that one took three overtimes. Chris Knight still unable to hit a shot. Anderson again. Hill is down court to his right, and he will do it himself. Geiger with the follow. Biggest lead for the Yellow Jackets. They lead by 20, 84-64. Geiger again. On his back, O'Connell. Coming up tomorrow, NFL action on ESPN, previewed on game day at noon Eastern time. Every highlight from every game at 7 o'clock Eastern on NFL prime time. And then it's kickoff time as the Seattle Seahawks, still holding on to those AFC playoff hopes, take on the Denver Broncos at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Here in Atlanta, we've got 12.56 to go. A 20-point lead for Georgia Tech. And Matt Geiger at the line. Eight points, six rebounds for the seven-foot junior tonight. Bob, I noticed in the schedule, the LMU has got one more game with Pacific on the road before they return home. Probably take them three games to get adjusted to their own court. <laughs> They've been gone so long. By the time Jay's team plays St. Joseph's on December 29th, it'll be 14 consecutive road games over two seasons they play. Nine for Geiger. Ivano Newbill will come back in. Geiger takes a seat. Well, he's done a nice job tonight with their half court offense. They didn't work a lot on it in practice this morning. Much improved. O'Connell the miss. Anderson running. Lyons scurrying to chase him and catch him. And the shot won't go as he draws the foul. I think somewhere in Kenny Anderson's background, he must have been on a lot of merry-go-rounds when he was growing up. Everything he does, he does 360s, wheeling and dealing. Watch it again. Watch him handle the basketball. Always with the head up. Looking, looking, nobody there. A little spin move right here. I'll get around the defender. I'll draw the foul. I'll try for a three-point play. I don't get it. Okay, I'll shoot two and make those. Kenny Anderson, great guard. It's like Kevin Cantwell said earlier, he can get to the line almost whenever he wants to. Anderson with 31 points tonight, six rebounds and three assists. It's a pleasant attitude. He has so much fun playing this game. Comes up with it after the miss. Is this an assist? Mackey. Oh, count it. The ball might have fallen had he left it alone. But he got a little impatient. 
Kenny walks up to him and says, all right, you blew my assist. <laughs> 21 point game, down to the 12, 20 mark we go. Lowry with the miss and Loyola Marymount will keep it on the baseline. ACC is going to be an interesting conference this year. Tech's going to, I think it's going to be right there at the top. Fighting. Like North Carolina is going to be all the good. Big win against Purdue tonight. Peabody on the inbounds play. Nowhere to go. He looked up and saw Newbill and Mackey standing there. Oh, a bullet. Mackey caught it. Well, they, that time they got the assist. But they figured out how to pass to Mackey now. Just throw it as hard as you can, and it'll stick right in his hands. O'Connell short with the three. Mackey pulling down another one. Nice pass, good work. Demotto to Hill. He's, the easy shot was missed. And on the baseline, Craig Holt. It's a for Loyola Marymount. Time out on the floor, 11.47 to go. It's Georgia Tech, 87-60. Tech with a 23-point lead, 11.47 to go. Well, of course, Larry Conley, a local celebrity, is here, and there are some others as well. Mike Fratello, former Atlanta Hawks basketball coach, now a commentator and color analyst for NBC doing NBA basketball games. Mike, uh, looking very resplendent, sitting there uh, next to Mr. Kuppenheimer, who the term is named after. Yeah, a lot of good threads in the building tonight. Excellent threads. <laughs> Across midcourt, Terrell Lowry playing with four fouls. Peabody on the left wing, they kick it inside, Petruska. He's got to find a way to shoot with that right hand a little bit. He goes in there, and they can defend that left-handed shot if he's unable to make that switch. Well, Bob, when he makes that turn, instead of wheeling and going to, the, to his right, which is a natural thing for a left-hander to do, he goes against the green and spins back to the left. Very difficult to take a shot like that. And in, in the two games we've seen him play, he has a tendency with that left hand to want to go left. He needs to make that move to go into the right or at least begin to use some of that right hand, as you said. Nineteenth point of the night. Hey, well, he's doing something right. He's scoring 19 points tonight. He's had a pretty good evening. Seven over his average. Mackey with the rebound. Number 12 for him tonight off the glass. The referee just tripped over a cameraman in the front right here. There's been some referees tumbling on the floor here tonight. Lenny works in the first game. Hit a wet spot right in front of the Georgia bench and went tumbling. Oh, there's a three. Finally, Craig Hold is on the board. That's a good move by Barry. Didn't force it. Almost lost it. Barry out on top for Brian Demolik. Some defense right now for the Lions. Matchup. Good ball from a good reversal. Georgia Tech with a three guard offense in there. Kenny Anderson, Demolik, Barry. Barry to Anderson. All three guards handle it on that little sequence. And on the baseline, Petruska with a foul. That'll be his fourth. Foul trouble piling up on the visitors. Petruska has four. Terrell Lowry has been playing for a while with four. And Chris Knight got his fourth a long time ago. Thus, pacing time for Jay Hillock. His ranks could be very thin very shortly. Always interests me, uh, Bob, when undergraduates come out and play in the NBA. And of course, we're hearing rumors to the effect that Kenny Anderson will do that. When NBA scouts, and as a matter of fact, there are a lot of them here tonight, take a look at a guy like this. I mean, you usually don't draft guards in a lottery pick. They like to go for size. This guy's got so much talent. I just don't know how you can pass up somebody like that. He's only 6'2", 168. He's so quick. Terrell Lowry. And don't think Lowry doesn't know a lot of scouts are here tonight either. Tom Peabody will be number two on him. Lowry tonight with 21 points, only six since halftime in the first nine and a half minutes of this second half. Two man, two man, Terry. Good shot of the Omni right there. It'll be interesting to some of the fans out there. Uh, everyone who follows athletics is obviously aware that the 1996 Olympics are coming to Atlanta, but they're not going to use the Omni for basketball. They're going to use the Georgia Dome where the Super Bowl is going to be played in 1994 
as the facility for gymnastics and basketball. And it's going to seat almost 34,000 people. So uh, pretty good move, almost double what the LA Forum has. Yeah, about the size of the Carrier Dome, for reference sake. Atlanta 1996, the symbol, the Olympic symbol for the city. Billy Payne, uh, the man who had the dream and really had the foresight to put it together and bring it to this city, he was in attendance here tonight. In fact, threw up the ball for the first game and did not throw it up well. <laughs> Billy was a football player. Played with for Vince Dooley of Georgia, who also was in attendance here. Tonight. They're going to have to throw up a lot of facilities in the next four or five years here. Fast. Ball is on the out-of-bounds line. Marcus Slater, his first touch of the game. Slater is a 6'8", 50-year senior out of Carson, California. A spot player who gets a little PT here tonight. Tech, Tech rapidly running up some points here. They've got 90. We've got over 10 minutes to play. 22-point game. Again, LMU is in one of those times when their offense has stalled like it did in the first half. Greg Holt with a nice block on Anderson and Lowry right down the middle. 23 for Lowry tonight. Anderson sees Demolik in the left wing. He angles in, bounce pass, Newbill! Nice assist by Brian Demolik. Lowry for three. They've really gone cold from the outside. Anderson trapped, and he called a timeout. He knew he was in no man's land. Georgia Tech stopping the clock, leading by 22 with 9.35 to go at the Kuppenheimer Classic in Atlanta. Well, the four teams here in the Kuppenheimer Classic, some classic Atlanta hospitality they were treated to last night, arriving at the historic Fox Theater by horse-drawn carriage for the tip-off banquet. Bobby Cremens and Hugh Durham, the home coaches, if you will, from Georgia Tech and Georgia in attendance. And tonight, a check of over $10,000 was presented to the Scottish Rite Children's Hospital here. And uh, that, of course, makes it all worthwhile. A little bit of a history lesson here for the folks who never, never traveled to Atlanta. The Fox Theater was the site of the premiere of Gone with the Wind. Now, were you there that evening? That's what I want to know. Uh, not quite. Oh. I had to stay home that night. Okay. <laughs> it was a school night, in other words. <laughs> quite an evening. Quite a theater. John O'Connell has just drawn his fourth. That's a quartet of Lions with four fouls. See Bobby Cremens right there, the man in the background with that headset on? That's Wack Heider, who used to be the former basketball coach at Georgia Tech. was for many, many years when Georgia Tech was a member of the Southeastern Conference and now obviously a member of the ACC. Kenny Anderson, point number 34. He's shattering his uh, omni performances of the past. In five games in this building, he had averaged 26 points and 10 assists. I'm feeling he'll be back here many, many times in the future. And getting paid for it. Yes. Craig Holt recently got his first three-pointer, and there's another one as he finally gets on the board. Here's Anderson running. 94-73 the score. Didn't force that situation, so a lot of uh, Lions down there decide to pull it back out. Berry switching it. Anderson runs by Slater. What a touch. 37 for Kenny. Good move by O'Connell. John O'Connell with 13 tonight. Berry on the baseline. Here's Lowry for three. Again, well off the mark. He's not having a good night at all from the field. Down the court, Kenny Anderson. Layup drill. 39 for Anderson tonight. Here's Slater in from the left side. Kisses it high off the glass, and Berry has it for Tech. Demolik whips it down. Right side, new bill to Mackey. And Slater got a hand in. Well, when you sit and watch the last 10 minutes of a basketball game where there's such a, a dramatic difference in the points, you get such sloppy play on both ends. But one of the problems Loyal and Marymount has had all night, and I want to address this right now, is that they really have had no offensive rebounding. Georgia Tech has gotten everything off of there, and they've triggered that, that break out of there and gotten easy shots on the other end. From the corner, Barry with a two, and John has 22. Georgia Tech's got 100. Our 
just lead 25, 100 to 75 it is. Clock running just down to the eight minute mark. See, there's that turnaround again, and this time Petruska banks it in. Goes right down that left side again. 21 for him. it down deep. Geiger just manages to keep control. He switches for Barry. Running with it. Hold. Lowry. He's got Slater to his left. He receives it. Boom. The Bollock made a nice move. He made the best move of everybody. He got out of the way. <laughs> Here he comes back the other way. It's 100 to 79 now. Bollock to Barry. Inside to Geiger. Kenny Anderson has been out there waiting. Swish and a new career high for Kenny, 42. Holt at the other end, short. Very running. He's got Anderson left. Ooh, a little behind the back of Trey again. Thank you. 45 now. Lowry looking to answer, missing again. And we had a whistle and a foul. We've talked about him so much tonight, and he can do so many things with the basketball. This is one of them. He can shoot the ball, and he can shoot it from anywhere on the floor. That's one of the advantages of when you're a guard coming out of New York City and you can handle the ball and you play against good competition. You learn to take it inside and handle it, but you also learn to be able to shoot the ball outside, and he can do a little bit of both. Ryan Hill will check in for Georgia Tech. Not just a little bit. He can do a whole lot of both. Brian Demolik will check out. You know, Georgia Tech's going to have a good year this year, and I'm talking about the type of year that Bobby Crimmins has been used to for the last seven or eight years. Took the club to the Final Four last year. This guy at the free throw line, Matt Geiger, really has to come on and play well. He's not a very physically strong guy, even though he's seven feet. He's going to have to develop some sort of strength and really begin to play tougher inside. Because when he gets into the rigors of the ACC, he's going to come up against a really tough competition. John O'Connell buries it for the left side. 15 for John. It's 107-81. Six and a half to go. Anderson is nearing the all-time Georgia Tech points record for a single game. And a lot of time to get it. Here he goes. Dishes. Geiger. Nice touch. 12 for Matt. What's that tell you about Kenny Anderson? Had a chance to maybe throw up a bad shot. Dropped it right in the lap of Matt Geiger. Walker, left side Slater. Slipped and walked. Marcus took a stroll on the baseline down there. Malcolm Mackey back for Georgia Tech. He will replace Ivano Newbill. 6'9", 230 freshman. He'll be around here for a while. Perry loops it left side. Geiger he might have felt that pass before he saw it. Maybe still feeling it. Yeah. Walker, good pass. O'Connell, way short. Anderson with the rebound. Immediately running, looking. I saw him cast a glance to Brian Hill over there. Look at that side. Move. John Berry from the corner with a three, and that's 25 for him. Raheem Harris. Tipped by Petruska. Geiger with it. Petruska took it away and can't save it. That's pretty good hustle by a guy when his team's down by 31 points. He even runs like a European. Up on his toes. You know, you watch him run. Right up on, right up on the edge of his shoes. Kenny Anderson underneath. Mackey, yes! Kenny Anderson is getting everybody in the act here now. Mackey with 18. He says, I've got mine, I'll give you yours. Petruska beats Geiger, easy two. Richard Petruska with 23. 
Obviously going to get a little sloppy at the end right here. Anderson for a three. And had to rim out to stay up. Greg Walker tripped at midcourt by Kenny, and that'll be his fourth. Sorry about that. You know, Bob, you and I have been doing college basketball for a number of years. I can't remember ever seeing a, a point guard that I thought had all of the, the ability that Kenny Anderson has. And I'm talking about not just the ball handling and the, the ability to dish, but he's such an easy shooter, and he's got such a nice, soft touch from 18, 20, 22 feet. The total game and the ease with which he appears to do all those things. You, know, you talk to people coming out of New York up there, and, and they'll all tell you whenever you measure someone against another player, that's the greatest compliment you can have. And people in New York measure all of the point guards that come out of New York to that young man, Kenny Anderson. And probably will for the next decade or so. Walker on the miss. James Munlin just in with the rebound. Anderson high off the glass, and he's tied the all-time Georgia Tech scoring record of 47. Petruska on the miss. Walker has it. Blocked by Barry, and here he goes. And he is hammered. And gets up with words for Greg Walker. Mundlin wants a piece now. He was going jaw to jaw with Chris Knight. Guys, it's 116 to 83. Here's Barry on the move. Walker coming from the backside. He was trying to reach the ball, but he got all of Barry's body before he got to the ball. John comes up and says something. Walker was off the floor way before Barry was. John goes to the line. He scored 25 tonight. He was responsible for at least 12 other points with six assists. You really want to make it hurt? Make the free throws. O'Connell leaves. So does Greg Walker. That's number 20. Terrell Lowry. He's had an eight-point second half in a 23-point evening. Four twenty-four to go. 117 to 83 with that free throw. Seven for John Barry tonight. Matt Geiger will leave. And John Barry will have a seat. Rod Belenis has checked back in for Georgia Tech. They've just made the announcement about Kenny Anderson tying the all-time record. I gotta believe Bobby's gonna leave him in there just to get the record and then he'll get him out of there. Rich Yunkus twice scoring 47 in games for Georgia Tech. Big left-hander from Southern Illinois. Good play there. It's from that area. Some good b-ball out of that area. Little Egypt country. Yeah, got around. Cairo. They don't call it Cairo there. It's Cairo. No, Anderson. Look at that move. Side for Brian Hill. Buries the three. It's 121 to 83. On the floor, Bolanis with the foul. The only bad thing that could happen here for Kenny Anderson would be if he got that fifth foul before he could get the scoring record. He's playing with four. I think maybe we want to ensure that we keep our crowd here. He waits till the last second to get it. Otherwise, they're all going to get up and leave. <laughs> By the way, along with Anderson's record, Tech has tied a team record with 121 tonight. Last set January 10th of 89 against Georgia State. Hold your megaphone out of the way. Terrell Lowry at the line. Petruska keeps it alive. Jump hook, and there's a tip by Chris Knight. First field goal of the night. Here comes Anderson. Is this it? Yes! He's got 50. Chris Knight, offensive rebound. Put up and missed by Christian Scott. Petruska, Bolanis has it. Down the court, Brian Hill. 
Anderson left side, and Hill will do it himself. And he hangs to avoid the injury. is leaving. Arrest that man. He went 50 downtown. <laughs> Brian Hill complete, completes the three-point play. He will leave. And Brian Gimberlin will make his first appearance of the year when we return. Three team to go. It's over in Atlanta. Coming up right after the basketball game, Sports Center with Tom Mees and Gary Miller. We'll have NFL highlights, the Skins and the Colts playing a thriller tonight, plus NBA, the Bucks and Spurs, Pistons and the Sixers. Back now to the Kenny Anderson Show in Atlanta. You got that right, Chris. Bobby Kremen's uh, getting a little stage time along with the star as well. 127 to 85. Kenny has 50 of those. 18 of 27 from the field tonight. That's two out of every three. Hey, Bob, we see two great guards in the last two weekends. Burnett, Loyal to Marymount has been really the one who's received the arrow in the heart. Brent Price with 56 last weekend. Kenny Anderson with 50 tonight. Gerald Lowry just hit for his 26th. Not Bolanna short. And there's a tip by the guy playing for the first time this year. Brian Gimberling, a sophomore out of Vero Beach. It's always nice to get the guys in off the bench. They get a, usually get a chance to play. And then underneath, Ross Richardson with his first appearance of the night. A freshman from Flint, Michigan with an easy two. Here's Lowry again, angling in, muddling the rebound. 2.30 to go. It's 129 to 90. Kimberling again. Okay. Zuska the rebound. And he feels it. He wants it back again. I've been sitting over there a long time. I've got my night tonight. I'm going to show you. Yeah, seven games. Haven't played all year. Melanis. And the ball was shot up there by Greg White. A walk on seeing his first action. And I'll tell you one thing. When Kenny got that 50th, this place emptied very quickly. We came to see that tonight. That was goaltending, so White got the two on that fast break. Georgia Tech will get it back on the turnover. There's what's left of the Omni crowd. A record setting Kenny Anderson and a Georgia Tech performance tonight. They've scored 10 more points tonight than this school ever had in a ball game before. A short there from Greg White. Kimberling underneath operating for his second basket. Who are these guys? That's from Vero Beach. He watches the Dodgers during the spring. He comes up here and plays basketball. Huh? on the rebound. Demolic running the floor. Left side, White. Kimberling again! So we're out loving this. 135 to 90. Jay Hillock calls a timeout. With a minute 23 to go, Tech by 45. Of course, Loyola Marymount came in giving up 129. Georgia Tech center stage tonight, leading by 45 with 123 to go. The night after Christmas on ESPN, J.D. Barnett and his Tulsa Golden Hurricane take on his ex-school, VCU, Sonny Smith visiting Tulsa. And then the team that Tulsa just beat in the Missouri Valley, Creighton hosting Louisiana Tech. Missouri Valley Conference non-conference doubleheader Wednesday night on ESPN for your holiday cheer. The miss by Marcus Slater. Craig Holt rejected, but a foul on Brian Gemberling. Hey, the guy's got to do something wrong. He's only played two minutes and has six points on it. Tell you what, the guy's getting a lot of air time. What are you doing it, Brian? Craig Holt at the line. What an off night for him. Scoreless until the midway point of the second half. That's his seventh point of the night. He's averaging 16, and he's coming off a 17-point performance at LSU. Only two of nine from the floor tonight. 
for Loyola Marymount to have any chance to win this game, they needed a big night from him to complement the big night you knew Lowry was having. One minute to go. 135 to 92. White batted away by Hull. Sports Center follows here on ESPN this evening. Tom Mees and Gary Miller standing by. NFL and NBA highlights, scores, and all the rest. Mundlin! I've heard of a fall away. That looked like a walk away. And James Gaddy, a walk on who's in, just swatted that ball off the head of Greg Walker out of bounds. All the walk ons getting playing time today. Well, sometimes in the end, like this, you really get some funny circumstances that pop up or occur. Mundlin right there was a triple way. Double dribble. Slater with the turnover. 41 seconds to go. Loyola Marymount will fall to two and seven. Georgia Tech ranked preseason number 16 will be five and three. They are not ranked at the moment. You gotta remember too though, they've only lost three games by a total of five points. Yeah, they played some tough games on the road. There is Greg Walker going coast to coast for two. White, left side. Aquilanus can't hit. Kemberling up over the top. He tips it over the baseline, and Loyola Marymount has it with 21 seconds to go. Ray Cole. Right side, Chris Knight. There's the two guys that have not done it for LMU tonight. Munlin skies for the rebound. At 6-11. Two seconds to go. Gemberling launches it high off the glass, and it is over. 135-94. to 94. Bob, it was really the Kenny Anderson show tonight with 50 points. Yes, 50. He's a tremendous player. It'll be a lot of fun to watch him for the rest of this basketball season. Happy holidays to you, Larry, and to all of our basketball fans watching tonight. For Larry Conley, Bob Carpenter, good night from Atlanta.